Please give me heating oil. On a snowy night, deep into the night, the doorbell rang. When I opened the door, there stood my four-year-old niece. She was shivering from the cold, her lips were purple. Why had such a small child made the journey to our house, which took even adults 30 minutes? That's impossible. He always wears a stoic expression, but he's gentle with a tender side, and easily moved to tears. However, after what happened next and I learned the truth, I was shaken to the core. I have been married to Connor for three years now. Our life together has been peaceful, and I have always felt reassured. However, one of the few concerns in our life was about children. Both Connor and I had wanted children since the beginning of our marriage, but there were no signs of that happening. Although I understood that it was something beyond our control, I couldn't help but feel a little lonely every time I saw couples with children on the street. Another concern was the strained relationship with my own family. Especially with my brother Adam, things were not going well at all. It was largely because of him that I had distanced myself from my parents emotionally. My brother, who is five years older than me, has always looked down on me. Adam excelled in everything and acted as the model child in front of our parents. No matter what happened, our parents always believed in him and rarely paid attention to what I said. Nevertheless, we continued to maintain our relationship as a family. Both my brother and his wife, as well as my husband and I, lived near our parents' house after getting married, so inevitably we had many opportunities to encounter my brother. Hey, Natalie. Still no kids. Yeah. It's just something we can't control. If you keep taking it so lightly, your husband might just leave you one day. With a smirk on his face, Adam laughed as if he were quite satisfied. His favorite pastime was teasing me and Connor about not being able to have children. My kind husband doesn't show any signs of anger and skillfully brushes off these comments, but I can't help but feel uneasy. Even my brother's wife, Vicky, seems uncomfortable at those times. I feel like she's a kind person from the way she treats their daughter, Bella, but she seems unwilling to go against Adam. While I did want to get along with my sister-in-law and niece, doing so would mean having to deal with my brother, so despite living nearby, we kept our interactions to a minimum. On one particular day, something unusual happened. Please give me heating oil. Mommy is cold. Late at night, when I opened the door in response to the doorbell, my niece stood there with purple lips. The wind had been biting since morning, and snow had started falling quietly in the evening. Why had four-year-old Bella come all the way to our house, a journey that even adults would take 30 minutes to make? That's impossible. I was startled when my husband suddenly raised his voice at our shivering niece. Anyway, we needed to warm up Bella. When I thought that, my husband was already gently picking up Bella. Without a word, Connor carried Bella into the warm room. My husband often appears grumpy, leading to misunderstandings, but he's truly gentle and kind. However, seeing him behave so differently from just moments ago left me bewildered, and I followed after him. Connor As I called out to my husband, I was surprised for another reason. He seemed on the verge of tears. My husband raised his voice at our niece because he was trying to hold back tears and his tension made his voice louder than intended. Saying that's impossible was likely because he couldn't simply send Bella back without understanding the situation, especially since she seemed clearly distressed. Once I understood this, it made sense. I asked my husband to prepare some warm drinks for our niece. Meanwhile, I sat her in front of the stove, wrapped her in a blanket, 
and decided to talk to her to find out what had happened. Bella, what happened out in this cold? Mommy, she's still sleeping and won't wake up. Her body feels cold, so I thought she might be too cold to wake up. I wanted to make her warm, but we ran out of heating oil. Hearing this, I felt a chill run down my spine. It stirred up such grim imaginings. All right. But the heating oil is heavy, so uncle and I will drive you there. Is it okay? Thank you. Bella's expression finally brightened, but time was of the essence. We hurriedly got into the car and headed to my brother's house. Five minutes later, we arrived at my brother's house. We rushed inside and found my sister-in-law collapsed in the living room. Vicky. There was no response from my sister-in-law, but she seemed to be barely breathing. Thank goodness. Connor, let's take her to the hospital right away. Got it. Vicky, hang in there. Whoa. As my husband lifted her unconscious body, he almost lost his balance. What's wrong? Are you okay? Yeah, just startled. She's much lighter than I expected. His words made me feel uneasy once again. Despite the bitter cold of the winter night, it was icy cold inside the house, and Vicky was wearing a heavy down jacket. Furthermore, around the bed, there were piles of blankets, quilts, and even other coats and scarves. Could it be that they had been living in such dire conditions without proper heating? I couldn't help but imagine that possibility. Luckily, there was a large hospital nearby, so we quickly transported Vicky by car. After completing various procedures, we returned home with our niece for the time being. She must have been quite tired because she fell asleep right away. Meanwhile, we still hadn't been able to reach her father, Adam. With various worries weighing on my mind, my husband and I also drifted off into a short sleep. The next day, Connor went to work with concerns about Bella. Shortly after, we received a call from the hospital informing us that Vicky had regained consciousness. I went to the hospital with my niece immediately. Natalie, Bella. Vicky. I'm so relieved. Mommy. Are you okay? Hi, hi. My niece rushed to Vicky and burst into tears upon seeing her mother. Perhaps seeing her mother's face caused the tension in her to finally break. Vicky lovingly stroked Bella's back as she fell asleep, exhausted from crying. According to the doctor, my sister-in-law had hypothermia, malnutrition, and her cold had worsened, putting her on the verge of pneumonia. The situation could have been much worse if your body temperature had dropped a little more. Thank you so much for helping me and taking care of Bella. Vicky repeatedly thanked us while crying leaving me momentarily speechless. It's... It's okay. But, if you don't mind, could you tell me what happened? Well... Bella came to our house asking for heating oil. But, I'm sure there are other ways we can help besides that. Natalie. Thank you. Actually... It took a long time for Vicky to tell her story with a catch in the throat. It was clear that something terrible had been happening in my brother's home. I wasn't the only victim of my brother's actions. If only I had confronted the situation instead of running away, maybe Vicky and Bella wouldn't have suffered like this. Feeling this deeply, I swore to somehow rescue them from my brother. Once again, after getting permission from my sister-in-law, I gathered some of Vicky and Bella's essential items along with a few other things from my brother's house. 
Furthermore, after making a call to a certain place, I finally managed to get in touch with my brother, and all that remained was to wait for that day. Then, two days after Vicky was discharged from the hospital, I invited Adam to our home. Vicky, who had left Bella with her friend, was already waiting at our house. When my brother arrived, late as usual, he seemed surprised to see Vicky there. Oh, Vicky. So, you've become friends with Natalie and Connor. As Adam spoke casually, Vicky remained silent, her lips tightly pressed together. Well, it's fine. Natalie, Connor, sorry for the trouble my family caused. It's okay, really. Ah. Natalie, you're fond of kids even though you don't have any, huh? It was good for you that you could take care of Bella while Vicky was hospitalized. My brother, who always mocks me in his usual manner, seemed to have no awareness of neglecting his wife and child, nor any awkwardness about the current situation. So, what were you, her real father, doing during all this? I was busy. Working to support my family, you know. Oh, really? Well, you might have some free time now. What do you think, Vicky? Yes, Adam, let's get a divorce. With that, Vicky handed Adam the divorce papers. Of course, her section was already filled out, but even seeing that, my brother remained calm. What's this? Trying to make a point. Adam defiantly flicked the divorce papers that were placed in front of him with his finger. You think you can manage on your own after leaving me? You can't even be a proper housewife. I. You're going to talk back to me. Do you even understand what you are saying? Being shouted at, Vicky's face turned as pale as it had when she collapsed in the room. Despite summoning the courage to speak up, seeing Adam's terrifying expression, she was completely terrified. It became clear how much she had been dominated by my brother through force all this time. Vicky. I'll tell him. As I touched my sister-in-law's hand, she squeezed it tightly and nodded. Vicky was suffering from malnutrition. Because you hardly provided any living expenses, she had to cut down on her own food budget. Huh. What's this all of a sudden? I've been giving her money, haven't I? Handing over a few thousand dollars randomly as household expenses? Do you even remember how much you were giving her? Vicky is lying. She kept a household account book. It was to explain to you that you couldn't live like this. But even after hearing that, my brother just laughed it off. A household account book she just scribbled in doesn't prove anything. Well, how about this then? At that moment, I took out my sister-in-law's medical diagnosis report and another document I had prepared. These are printouts of your bank account usage and card transaction history. There's no evidence of money being used for household expenses, is there? Where did you get those from? I got it from the computer at your house. Every website had saved passwords, so it was easy to log in. Suddenly confronted with such evidence, my brother's mouth hung open, and he struggled to find words. And besides, spending nearly $3,000 each month? Seems like you've been enjoying quite a lavish lifestyle. You said you were busy with work, but it seems like there was another reason you hardly ever came home. As I smirked meaningfully, Adam's face contorted. What's that supposed to mean? Don't say such disreputable things. Stop your weird fantasies. Oh, so you're going to play dumb till the end. I shrugged my shoulders and then revealed one last thing, something I had saved on my brother's computer. 
It was a photo of messages exchanged with his mistress, suggesting an intimate relationship. The messages even detailed extravagant gifts and trips, along with significant savings being spent on the affair partner. Even with all this, you still claim to be innocent? Adam, confronted with undeniable evidence, blinked rapidly. Vicky not only seeks divorce but also intends to claim damages. We're also willing to cooperate. Upon hearing this, Adam fell silent for a moment, but soon he began to lash out. What's that supposed to mean? You're sticking your nose into our marriage, who do you think you are? It's Vicky's decision. Humph, whatever. Do whatever you want. I won't let this slide. At this point, his defiance left me nothing but exasperated. But in a way, I expected it to come to this. After all, the reason we had someone hiding in the next room was precisely for this moment. You're beyond help. You can come in now. Huh. My brother's eyes widened in astonishment. Entering through the door were our parents. Dad. Mom. What are you doing here? We called them. Of course, they've been listening to everything. I observed Adam's stunned expression and my parents' complex emotions. They had always believed in my brother more than me. But surely, they must have understood his true nature by now. There's no way they would continue to support him, right? Anxiety surged through my chest at the thought. That's why the relief I felt when I heard the decision my parents made regarding Adam was immense. My parents decided to sever ties with my brother and support Vicky and Bella. Adam, confronted with their firm stance and clear position, could only react with confusion. Wait a minute. But, I'm the eldest son. You can't just abandon me, can you? Adam desperately clung on, trying to convince them to change their minds. Seeing him like that, I decided to play my final card. It's you who will be in trouble, isn't it, brother? Without the inheritance from our parents, you won't be able to repay your debts, will you? This was something I hadn't yet disclosed to our parents. I didn't want to burden them with the knowledge that their own child was relying on inheritance to pay off debts. I told you, didn't I? I've checked everything on your computer. You've been borrowing from various places. Well. But. But seriously, trying to estimate the value of the family land and cars? Isn't that a bit premature? At that point, even my brother turned pale, sweat starting to drip down his forehead. Natalie. Do you not care what happens to me? I mean, not really? Come on, don't say that. Aren't we just two siblings here? It's okay to help each other out, right? I was surprised by Adam's sudden change of heart but my own feelings remained steadfast. I'm sorry, okay. I'll apologize. But I can't repay the debt on my own. Adam looked at Vicky with pleading eyes, but she completely ignored him. There was not a single person there who sided with my brother. Isn't such an apology too little, too late? Both Vicky and I don't care what happens to you anymore. You get what you deserve. As I cut him down with those words, Adam slumped his shoulders and collapsed to his knees. Afterward, Vicky and my brother officially divorced. Given Adam's behavior up to that point, custody naturally went to Vicky. He was ordered to pay a lump sum of $120,000 in child support and $15,000 in alimony. However, with only his daytime job, 
He couldn't keep up with the payments, so he started working night shifts doing temporary jobs every day. Vicky also received $10,000 in alimony from Adam's affair partner and has now started fresh working at a new job. And as for me, surprise! I found out that I'm pregnant. My husband, of course, and my parents, who had greatly improved their relationship with me, celebrated the news. Vicky and her daughter were also overjoyed, especially Bella. I'll teach everything to the baby. She said happily. Thinking about our upcoming child, I couldn't help but feel excited.